Finally, we're gonna be creating our eTubs model. We are now at the start page of eTubs 2016. This white background here is the working area, and on top of it are the different menus. They are arranged according to when you're gonna use them, or seemingly like in a chronological order. On the second level are the different shortcut icons. These icons will help you to save time in creating your model and at the same time doing your analysis and design. On the left side of the working area are the different toolbars to create and edit your model. So instead of getting inside these different menus, you can directly use these tools to create and edit your model. So let's get started. To start with, click File, New Model, and it will give you three options to initialize your model. The first option is use saved user default settings. If you haven't saved user default settings yet using command options, then eTubs will give you default settings. The second option is use settings from a model file. This will copy the setting of your old or previous files. But for the sake of this tutorial, I would like you to choose use built-in settings with where you're gonna choose your display units. Since we are more familiar with the metric SI, so keep it metric SI. We're not gonna use still section database and still design code, so keep it as default. And yes, you have to choose the latest concrete design code, which is ACI 318-14. If you're done, then click OK. And this new model quick templates will pop up on your screen. Now before we continue, for the sake of the beginners, there are many options to easily create your model. One of the best options is to import architectural plan and grid lines so you will not be creating all of this here manually. But since we are dealing with a very simple structure which is a water tank, we're gonna use this quick model template to create our grid lines and story levels. eTubs will give you uniform grid spacing and simple story data as default. But we need to choose custom grid spacing and custom story data to specify our grid lines and to specify our story data. First, we have to edit story data and this screen will pop up which you need to specify your story levels as well as your heights and elevations. But we only need one story level. So hit your control button and select all these three levels above. Right click, delete story, delete existing structure at story. And right now you only have one story level. Let us say that the top of the water tank is called the ground level with a height of 3.6 I hope you still remember the height if you're done click OK next we need to edit grid line data and for this I would like you to click edit grid data which will give you grid system data keep G1 as it is but click display grid data as a spacing which is much more easier than specifying ordinates Let's go back to our plan. We can specify three grids at X with spacing of 10 meters. And also we can specify two grids at Y with spacing of 3.7 meters. Keep in mind those numbers and let's input it here. We only need three grids at X so we get rid of D and specify our spacing as 10 meters. If we're done with X, Let's go to Y grid data. We only need two grids at Y, so we get rid of 3 and 4. And specify our spacing as 3.7 meters. If we are done, click OK and make sure that grid only is selected. Click OK and eTubs will give you two default windows, one 3D view and one plan view. But for easy modeling, let's close 3D view for the meantime and let's focus on our plan view. But before we continue, it is important to save our file first to have a copy. Let us name it as water tank just in case something wrong is gonna happen. Next, we are going to define our material properties and for this, click define material properties and it will give you these default values for materials. Since we are updating the concrete compressive strength, we choose 4000 PSI and modify it instead. For this project, we are going to use 30 MPa compressive strength of concrete. 
So I changed the name to C30. It depends on you how you will name your material. To change the strength of the concrete, go to Modify Show Material Property Design Data and change the strength of the concrete, which is 30 megapascal compressive strength. If you're done, click OK. But don't forget to update the modulus of elasticity. For the modulus of elasticity, we are given the equation, the weight of concrete, which is 2,400, raised to a constant value of 1.5 times another constant of value of 0 0.043 multiplied by the square root of the compressive strength of concrete, which will give 27,692. Input that value here 27,692 and if you're done click OK and save the material now it's time to define the section properties we will define sections for wall and slab because these are the only elements we're gonna be using for this project click define section properties go to slab section and choose slab 1 and then modify the property now for the slab covering the water tank, we are going to assume a thickness of 200 mm solid slab. So I call this as 200. So it depends on you how you will name your property. And don't forget to update the slab material. We're going to use 30 megapascal compressive strength of concrete. Also, for the modeling type, we will assume an in-plane stiffness only. So we will choose membrane type. And of course, don't forget to update your modifier. For slab, we will apply 0.25 for bending. These values are from ACI code. When you're done, click OK. And of course, very important you have to update the thickness to 200 mm. Since it's already 200, so we don't need to change it anymore. If you're done, click OK and save the property. Next, we're going to define the material properties for wall. Click Define, Section Properties, and go to Wall Sections. Modify Wall 1. Since we assume that the initial thickness of the wall is 300, I call this as W300. So it depends on you how you will name your property. Don't forget to update the wall material to C30. Since we are assuming that the wall will undergo in-plane and out-of-plane stiffness, we will put here shell thin. And of course, don't forget to update the modifiers. Both bending and membrane will be 0.70. Where did I get these values? It's all from the ACI code. You just have to go and read it. When you're done, click OK. Very important, you have to update the thickness to 300 mm. Click OK and save the property. Finally, we are now going to model the elements. First, we will start with wall. By making use of this toolbar here at the left side of your screen, draw walls. It will give you the properties of the object. Choose the right property which is W300 and start modeling your walls. As you can see, I'm doing it in a counterclockwise manner. You have to be consistent with your directions so that you will find no problem for the interpretation of the results. When you're done modeling your walls, next is the slab. It will give you the property of the object. Choose the right property which is S200. And same goes with the slab. You have to do it in a counterclockwise manner. Now that I'm done modeling my walls and my slab, the next thing that I'm gonna do is to apply supports. Go to the base, apply, okay, and select the points. You have to assign restraints. Since it's a footing or a, or a mat foundation, then you have to choose fix support. Click okay. When you're done, set your model in a 3D view by making use of the 3D button here. The next thing that we're gonna do is we need to apply mesh for both walls and slab. Let's choose walls. 
click assign shell and wall auto mesh options here you are given wall meshing options choose auto rectangular mesh and make sure to go for advanced select an approximate maximum mesh size of 1.0 meter click ok and save next we're gonna apply mesh for slab select slab go for assign shell and floor auto mesh options here you will select auto cookies cut object into structural elements to be compatible with the walls make further mesh options to one meter if you're done click ok now if you want to have a look of the shell analysis mesh you can go to set display options and click shell analysis mesh click ok next we will assign the load patterns go to define load patterns for this we will call eh for soil and wh for water let's have first wh since the type of load is not fixed it is then considered as live load then click add new load next is eh we will also consider the type of load as live load then click add new load now that we already defined the load pattern for soil and water you may click ok we will now assign the loads but first i would like you to have a view of what a non-uniform loads look like click assign shell loads and non-uniform as you notice the non-uniform load p is expressed by the equation ax plus by plus cz plus d where x y and z are the global coordinate system now to have a better understanding on how to supply this a b c d constant here let us go back to our pressure diagram 